like to um, introduce our first uh, uh, participant who will respond, and she is Safina Maulida, and she is an Indonesian pro democracy activist and organizer, and the founder of the first eco feminism community in Indonesia. Wow. And uh, she is based now in Manila. Uh, with a deep uh, commitment to democratic principles, Safina has dedicated herself to NGO work for the past eight years. Currently, she is involved with in initiatives for international dialogue, where she actively resists authoritarianism, uh, state violence, and militarism in Southeast Asia. Her experience in dealing with conflicts and crisis has led her to focus particularly on the situations of Myanmar and Afghanistan. Please welcome um, Sophie. Uh, good morning. Oh, it's very challenging to speak in front of you here. You're I mean, I only have a several experience, and I hope it resonates to what you do in your daily life as activist. So, yeah, I want to share uh, an event that mostly everyone did know behind the Indonesian People's Power Reformations in 1998. So. We have a reformation after 32 years of authoritarian regimes under Suharto. So I want to tell a bit story behind it that most people don't know yet. So this event is in 1997 when the Asia economics collapse and under the Suharto regimes, uh, He's been trying to silence human rights violations. And there is no group of activists, there is no protest that could survive on demonstrating without being arrested for one year, two years, three years. So it's so hard to find a spot where the activists can voice in their voice to, to start break uh, the regime of silence under Suharto. And the event is called Suara Ibu Peduli, translated to English as Voice of Concerned Mother. And this is one of the headlines uh, covering the demonstration led by the uh, feminist activist Suara Ibu Peduli. So, Voice of Concerned Mothers is an Indonesian movement that advocates for the rights and well-being of mothers and children. The organization addresses various social, economic, health issues affecting women and children in Indonesia. The narrations that they bring up is the hike of price of the milk. So it's uh, definitely the uh, well-being of their children. That is the issues that they uh, put it on their demonstrations. And there are a group of very progressive feminists in Indonesia whose power plays the family issues. So actually it's not about the hike of the price of the milk, but it's about thinking how to not get arrested after we demonstrates in the heart of Jakarta. It's, it's happening in Bundaran Hai, it's uh, the middle of uh, Jakarta. So it's very impossible, they do not, uh, people can get arrested after demonstration there. But Suara Ibu Peduli, the voice of concert mother, are successfully did that because their power plays the issues of motherhood, motherness, and you know, the soft issues, and as we all know, uh, women always seen as second citizens, so they will not harm the uh, foreign security silencing by the Suharto. 
So it is just the amazing things. And um, they play the role of mother, as I said before. And, and I also I want to minimize that feminism is different with feminine. It's very different with femininity. So feminists want to challenge all the power structure. And that is uh, one of the way the power plays that. And uh, at that time, Swara Ibn Paduli uh, speaks about the high price of the milk and we call it further a politics of milk. So it is from the organization's name, the issue they use, the tactics, can uh, keep demonstrating. And the police that guarding them at the demonstration is also a woman police because the demonstration, the demonstrator is a woman. And the Sukhata regions really uh, looked down at the woman back then. And the power play kept going. Suara Ibn Paduli also used rose flower when demonstrating to ask people to join. And including to give it to the woman police there. And by that, some of the women police are uh, holding hands together with the demonstrator. So it goes so well. And because the women uh, police are feel relates and concerning their child will be because the crisis of the economies are really happening there. And the voice of concerning mother became a very big mess back then. It's 1997 and the reformation is on the 1998. It covered in every newspaper, local, national, regional. And however, the activist of Sora and Paduli is finally arrested too. And after many successful demonstrations, and the leader is one of my professor in the university, teaching me directly. She's also the first woman astronomer, Dr. Carolina Supali and Dr. Gadis Arifia. And yes, you hear it right. They are an astronomer who do, did a direct activism. And on the pledge, on the trial of the Suare Puli, our professor, is say again that the demonstration is nothing about to break the so hard to raise him, but it's just totally because we care of our children. And after a week, they are released. And after they are released, they keep organizing on the ground to the mass protests, regroup, and even more extensive their coalitions, make another organization, and it be a very big trigger of a wave protests in almost every province in Indonesia. So they are also supporting the student movements that some of you must be knows that the reformations in the 1998 is led by the students' uh, protests. And Suara Ibn is one of the supporters, the big supporter, and to trigger that the possibility of democracy in Indonesia is still up in the air. Because that time, it was a very dark time. It's an economic crisis. And our activists has been uh, forcibly took somewhere. They are really hard to say something of dissent to the government back then. And I also put this story in because it's actually happened just today, in the May in the 1998, and it's exactly 25 years ago, and it's good to reminisce in that. And yes, the Suara Ibn Paduli opens the possibility, and there is a, the strong, well-organized, courageous, and what we call now is the creative movements that happened 26 years ago, it's 1997. And it's all also opening uh, the possibility of longing that we are uh, 
as a collective movement, you are possible to make change. And also, um, the things that I want to say are the next, that resonates and to, to Mark's speech, is about the kingdom movements. Is this kind of protest repeatedly in my time? Because as uh, what I do is I learn it from a professor, I learn it from the books, but this one is I experience it by myself. It's uh, happening on the 20th, 20, 2016 when I was still in college. This time, uh, together with my uh, professor back then, we uh, go together with uh, Kingdom activists. Uh, Kingdom is a region, is a regency in the central Java that is Kingdom Mountain is being extracted to the limestone. And it's a uh, very suddenly that that areas has been sold to this manufacturer. And we try to figure it out how we uh, resist the repressions, the uh, effort of depriving so many lives of people there. And we do, uh, with the Kinder movement, we do a seven feet protest. It's in front of us, the government police, and it's a peaceful resistance and a similar actions. The protest involves participants burying their lives in conflict to emphasize their commitment to protecting the condemned mountains and opposing livestock mining in the region. Because by this uh, extractive uh, limestones by the cement uh, company, women have to walk 10 kilometers per day just to take a bath, just to boil the water to have a drink in everyday lives. And the activists then uh, use uh, these powerful visual demonstrations to convey the message and draw attention. And it's uh, symbolizing the determination to stay with the ground and protect their land and lift their goods from further destructions. So we also use the narrations of Mother Earth, Mother Gaia, and it's also not about our uh, femininity that women always see as the earth, as the nurturer, but it is because we are really lived with with the living being, and it's and it's the feminist issues, definitely. And this also gained significance in the media coverage, public attentions, and became a symbol of iconic movements, expressions, and the community resilience and wavering commitment to their cause. This also inspired by the Chitko movements in India, I think it is Uttar Pradesh, when I know and learned about the Chitko movements from uh, Wandana Shiva, one of the eco feminists that is from India. And this effort, like uh, Swari Puduli, it, it sparked a wave of protest. So it's not just happening in the central Java, but it's happening also in the other region that face the environmental crisis. And it has sparked dialogue, foster solidarity among various advocacy groups and contributed to the broader environmental and social justice movement in Indonesia. It may not succeed this time, it's not succeed, but the cement company in other areas has kind of rethink again if they want to make the same case like this because it has been a very big news in Indonesia. It's like Suara Ibu Peduli. It's not success at that time, but it starts as a wave of protest that a possibility we want, to, the progress that we want is possible. So the uh, activists, the forefront of the Kenyan movements, we call it uh, Kartini Kingdom. Kartini is a woman heroine from Indonesia that supports uh, 
women can sit in the classroom together with the men back then in the 19th. And yeah, so this, this is a kind of real manifestations of what Mark has been saying. It's this, this region has so long talked about security, but whose security is that? Like they want stability, but whose stability is that? Because the kind of people doesn't feel the stability of their lives. So let's reclaim about the security that has been so much into militarizations. But like seeing the people's to people solidarity, let's uh, take over the needs of security and also the much of perception of it. Let's uh, we uh, deconstruct that together with a lot of movements, a creative thinking, how we organize things, and it is possible. I think the, the main things that the creative movement has to uh, rebuild again, rebuild again, because it's uh, open the possibility that change can be happened. And in this time of crisis, it's happening in Myanmar, Afghanistan. We feel like it's so dark. This time is feels so dark, and etc. And that is also why I joined Military Alliance, whose the host is Mark. And it's open a possibility that we can, as a youth, work together, think about. Um, the peace that we want, think about the futures we want, co-design our movements. It start with a hashtag, but we actually work uh, fighting together on the ground. And it's the solidarity, the change that we want might not be uh, present at a month or a year, but you know, the feeling of solidarity that we will be there for our friends if they call us in the 2 p.m. and we answer that is is the feeling that the possibility of peace is is, is there and in this time of crisis that is the vital things that actually needs to be up on the air. Yeah. That's all. I think it's it's very clear from uh, Sabina's response uh, this morning to Mark's um, uh, keynote address is the fact that um, women and children and other vulnerable members of society are greatly affected by issues of securitization and militarism. But We've heard inspiring and uh, empowering stories of how women can actually uh, become peace builders, um, as you've um, uh, demonstrated in the story that you've uh, shared uh, from Indonesia, uh, but also from uh, other places that you've referred to in your story. So thank you very much for that.